Hey what's up guys, welcome back to this game's tutorial, so in this one we actually create a game camera, so I don't know if you noticed, but um, the tower is a little bit further than it used to be, and if we hold our click, right now I'm holding the left click, and I'm moving towards the right side, it starts rotating at a speed of 180 um, per second, and then of course we go to the left side, the same thing happens, but in the other direction, and that's pretty much what we're trying to implement today, so guys, without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so before we get started, let's actually clean up what we didn't clean up last episode. So those two scripts just lying here, I'm going to put them inside of the script folder. Alright, so what we're going to be doing today is we are going to go inside of the game scene, so this one, and actually start just coding a little bit of our uh, final camera. So what's going to happen is we're going to be able to rotate around the camera. And uh, it's a fairly simple script. We are going to go ahead and just right click on here and create a new uh, C-sharp script that we'll call Game Camera, something like that. Once it is created, let's go ahead and just boot it up inside of MonoDevLop. And in here, like we always do, we're going to clean this whole script up and start declaring some um, field that we're going to be needing. So if you've made some camera with me before, you know I like to have a private Vector3 offset and then we create a new offset right here, so maybe uh, in this case that would be quite a big offset, so maybe 0, 10, and 20, 10 in height and 20 in distance. And let's go ahead and just make a private float, current x, which is going to tell you which angle you're looking at right now, and also a private float, sensitivity which I will put to something like 180 degrees, so that would be when you're trying to move around the camera, uh, I mean around the tower, you're going to be moving at 180 degrees uh, a second. So if you hold the uh, move button for two seconds, then you're going to do a full rotation. And then after that, a private, oops, a private float again, and screen side button, and I'll explain you what this is in a moment. Um, this one could actually be a constant, so let me just go ahead and just do private const and put it at the very top of my script. Also change the way I write it. Screen side buttons. Okay, so the control I'm aiming for right now is um, if you hold your finger, your touch, right on the side of the screens, then it's going to just assume that you're trying to rotate the camera around the tower. So say you're holding your finger uh, 50 pixels away from the maximum size of the screen that means you're trying to rotate uh, right and we're going to be coding that logic right here in the update so private void update and inside of here let's actually do um, if input dot get mouse button not get mouse button down not get mouse button up the actual get mouse button so if you're clicking anywhere on the screen and that works with touch as well so if you're just if your finger is somewhere on the screen then we're gonna be pulling the uh, mouse position so vector 3 mouse position is equal to input dot mouse position which also works for touch and once we have this we're gonna be doing some more if statements so if mouse position dot X is smaller than screen um, Oh yeah, it's a uh, const now. So screen side buttons like this. That means you're actually holding your finger on the left side of the screen. So in between the zero pixel and the fifty pixel. So that would mean that uh, current x is minus equal to time the delta time times sensitivity. Now else if mouse position dot x is uh, actually bigger than the screen dot width. So the whole size of the screen minus the screen side buttons. That means you're actually holding your finger on the right side of the screen. So current x plus equal time the delta time times sensitivity. Okay. Now having this right here, having this in the update, we should be able to update our current x to actually know which angle we should be looking our tower at. And now once we have that angle, we can go ahead and just code the moving logic. So down here, 
I'll say I'll just declare a new vector 3 so vector 3 direction is equal to offset let's actually position our camera directly on our offset to start off and then we're gonna create a quaternion for the rotation so quaternion rotation is equal to quaternion dot Euler 0 current X on the Y float and then 0 again because we're actually new we're actually moving using the uh, the Y rotation if you just take a look in the screen if we're trying to rotate like this it's actually the Y float up here that is moving so let's go back we now have our rotation all we're going to be doing now is transform the position is equal to the quaternion so rotation times the offset in this case direction okay let's have a quick look at this hopefully everything works and it is not going to work because I haven't put the script anywhere so inside of my game scene this scene let's go ahead and choose our main camera drag and drop the game camera on here okay now back to the preloader click once click twice go in the game and I don't know if you saw it but over here is my camera now of course we don't do the rotation just yet but if I'm holding Right now I'm only clicking once on the mouse and I'm going to be holding it for the rest of this scene. So as you can see when I'm about here, it actually goes on um, It goes on with the rotation clockwise. Now if I move over to this side, it goes in the other direction. Great, so we've got the position working. We actually orbit around the tower. Now we actually need to add just a little simple call transform dot look at and we're gonna be looking towards the tower tower is always at zero 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 but the height might change so I'm thinking about doing vector three dot up times and then in between um, parentheses we're gonna get the height divided by two so get tower I mean <laughs> the tower instance that get height divided by two like this and let's have a look at the final result of this and it should actually work quite well and here we go now we can spawn some minions and see what happens and uh, it is better to go like very far from the tower because that mu there might be a lot of enemies coming at one point and we don't want to be up too close because we're not going to be able to to see them now uh, remember that the, f the this actual plane the plane you see here is not going to be there in the end we just wanted to put it there to actually have a a, a sense of 3d all right so that was a fairly short episode but we covered a good thing so guys i hope you enjoyed if you learned something or if you liked the video please leave me a like really appreciate that if you have any question or comment you can also leave them in the comment section below also subscribe for more tutorials like these and i'll be seeing you guys tomorrow